What's happening, fishing friends, and welcome to another episode. You ever sit around with your buddies and talk hard fishing questions like, would you rather only use a bait caster or a spinning reel for the rest of your life? Maybe it comes down to fish catching. Would you rather only catch largemouth or smallmouth bass for the rest of your life? How about numbers? Would you rather catch only one big fish or a bunch of small fish? Maybe it's line. Would you rather only use mono, flora, or braid? Only one of those for the rest of your life? Well, I'm going to answer what I would do, all those questions and more in tonight's episode would you rather special now this is something an idea i got from my daughter we always do this she's always like dad can we play would you rather sure what is it it's always some crazy outlandish thing would you rather be able to fly or be invisible would you rather only eat donuts or pizza for the rest of your life i thought you know what that would be kind of fun to do with all of you so earlier today i posed a question on youtube and asked you all out there to answer and i got like 200 comments so thank you all very much i was surprised i didn't think i'd get maybe more than 50 but you all came through and made tonight's video possible. Tonight's Would You Rather Fishing Edition. So you're all gonna find out a little bit more about me questions that you all pose. So the first question is from Mike B. I like this one first because it's about frogs. Mike asks, would you rather never frog fish again or only use the frog to fish for the rest of your life? So only one lure for the rest of my life or never throw that again? Man, that's tough. That's like asking which kid's your favorite out of all of them. I love frog fishing. If you're new to the channel, my name's Debo and I'm highly addicted to frog fishing. But if I could only fish that for the rest of my life, that would be tough. Unless I was somewhere where I could catch other species and stuff on it, I think I'd have to give up the frog. I know it's hard. I've given up some hard stuff over my life, but I think I'd have to give up the frog and fish other stuff. I like catching fish. So if that means I have to drop down to a net and catch something and never throw the frog again, Guess I'll be going back to the old whopper, plopper, popper, and walking baits. Next up, Fishing Today asked, would I rather become a pro fisherman or go pro on YouTube? Now that might seem like an easy answer, right? I know a lot of fishermen, a lot of anglers want to be a pro fisherman, but I don't think people understand how much really goes into that. Those guys are on the road a long time. They're driving their rig. It's not like you can just fly there and be at the next spot and done. You've got to drive. I hate driving. I drive more than like an hour and a half and I'm falling asleep at the wheel. Also, that's a tough gig, man. You're only making money if you're in the top cut. I am not a tournament guy. I am, you know, not somebody that goes out and catches huge fish all the time. Hence, Debo Dinks. I think it would be a rough gig. You have to be truly dedicated and want to compete. Um, you know, growing up in that tournament lifestyle, if you had a, you know, a family member or somebody that you knew, you have to really, really crave that and want it. And I just honestly love to fish. So I think it would take a lot of the fun out if I were, you know, to be a pro fisherman. Now, as far as a pro YouTuber, full-time YouTuber, whatever the definition of that is, you know, maybe if I had a, a house in Texas or had more ability to fish all year long, maybe. But then there's also my family. You know, I've got kids, my wife, the house. That takes a lot to be able to quit everything and go out and do that on your own. So I, I tip my hat, a big sign of respect to the guys that have done that and said, tech with it, I'm quitting, I'm going full-time YouTube. Now, if I had to choose one, of course, it would be going full YouTube. I definitely don't have what it takes to be a professional fisherman. So I would continue doing this and talking to y'all. Bass Fisher Keegs asks, would you rather use soft plastics or only hard baits for the rest of your life? And there was a number of people that asked that question. Only soft plastics or only hard baits for the rest of my life. Definitely soft plastics. The Texas rig, swim baits. Man, there's so much you can do with soft plastics. I know cranking is fun. Like if you ask my old man, without a doubt, he'd say cranking hard baits, no problem. Me, next to frogging, throwing a Texas rig in a bunch of wood is probably my favorite. And the Texas rig or a stick bait, wacky rig. I mean, those are just flat out fish catchers. When the day is tough, I usually turn to some sort of, of soft bait, you know, whether it's a finesse Ned rig, a, a stick bait, a little text rig, whatever. I think I just catch way more fish that way. So for me, all the hard baits that have to go, I'd be fishing the softies. Sean Heap asks, would I rather use only chatter baits or spinner baits for the rest of my life? That's a toughie. As of the past, I don't know, five years or so, I've become a lot more partial to the chatter bait. Um, you know, I fish a lot of grass and stuff around here, so it's something that I can throw more the spinner bait however growing up if you'd ask my old man now what's Debo's favorite bait or has been the spinner bait was one of the few baits that I really became comfortable with as a kid um, and it's still one of my confidence baits today so I think I'd have to ditch the chatter bait spinner bait it is final answer I'm confident with it I've fished them for a long time they're a lot of fun killer in the spring and fall yep spinner bait Cheetos 405 says would you rather only catch smallies or largies for the rest of your life I admit I am not a very well-versed smallie fisherman. Tubes, Ned rigs, a few other things I'm pretty comfortable with, but 
As far as knowing all the ins and outs, fishing for smallies deep, not my deal. I'd rather beat the banks, fish shallow, throw frogs, flip and pitch to wood for largemouth. For me, largemouth all day. Now I know I've got people out there going, really Debo, small are the way more fighters. They're like five pounds fight more than one pound bass. I get it, they do fight a lot harder and it's really fun when you go out to the creeks and rivers. Even some lakes around here are pretty stocked with them. As far as being completely versed, I'm much more comfortable fishing for largemouth. Brumdart asks, would you rather fish only from a boat or the bank for the rest of your life? If we're taking into consideration time and preparation and everything, honestly, the reason I've got a John boat, you see me fish from the bank more often. I don't have a big bass boat. The deal is fishing from the bank, oftentimes I only have a couple hours after work. Same things on the weekend. I might only have four hours in the morning to go out. So getting the boat loaded, getting it out there, unloaded, all that stuff in between, getting back and packed up, just takes a ton more time with the boat. It's usually a full day adventure. Bank fishing, I can snap a couple rods out of the car, fish for an hour, be done back at home. So honestly, for me, I would have to go only bank fishing if I could only do one for the rest of my life. Artificial Lyle, this is an interesting one. Is fishing more important or is money? Artificial Lyle says, would you rather be able to fish for the rest of your life or win $1 million and never fish for the rest of your life again? $1 million would buy me a lot of stuff. Think of all the fishing gear I could buy with $1 million. And I'll tell you what, money is nothing if you don't have sanity, if you don't have your free time, if you don't have your family. Money cannot buy everything, regardless of what you think. Money does make the world go round. You do have to have money to live, but I would much rather be able to fish for the rest of my life than have a million bucks. Ethan Daniel asks, would I rather catch a world record bass but never catch anything over one pound again. I think I'm actually already there except without the world record. Or only catch four pounders for the rest of my life. Well, Ethan, I'm not a trophy fisherman. That'd be cool to see that, right? Devin, Debo's fishing, world record largemouth bass. I honestly would rather go out and only catch four pounders every time I go out. You know how much money I could win in tournaments if I always had five four pounders? Think if I was in MLF and I caught like 34 pounders. Yep, final answer, I'd rather catch only four pounders. Nolan Sims asks, jigs or texas rigs forever for me i've become a lot more comfortable with jigs swimming a jig is something i've always been pretty comfortable with but you know bottom bouncing a jig and that kind of stuff i've kind of done other things i've become way more comfortable with them in the past few years but for me without question the texas rig flipping brush pulling it through grass dragging it over rocks whatever it's weedless from the bank it's a lifesaver so Texas rig, final answer alexander kalandrishvili asks fish alone or fish with friends that's tough because I honestly enjoy both. You know, there's just something about hiking out to your favorite spot, listening to nature, being alone out there. It's weird. For somebody who doesn't like nature and who doesn't like to go out and fish, it's really hard to explain. People just don't get it. They're like, there's bugs and it could be raining and there's wind and pollen. But on the flip side, going out and fishing with friends, that's some of the most fun I've had. Fishing and meeting some of you people out there, meeting people on the water, fishing with a buddy. It's hard to beat. If I only had to choose one, I don't call them fishing friends for nothing. I would always go out with friends if I could. Fishing alone is cool, but having somebody to talk to and mess with and make fun of is a ton of fun out there. Life's too short. You gotta have fun. So fish with friends. Jack Sorum, only fish top water or never fish top water again. Again, that's tough. Top water is my favorite. However, there's a lot of times where top water is just not gonna do it. So when it comes down to it, I would have to give up top water. I know it's tough. It's like telling somebody they can never have pizza ever again. I know it's a hard thing to do, but I want to catch fish. So goodbye, top water. Totaro17 asks, live bait or artificial lures only for the rest of my life? Well, I'm not really a big live bait fisherman. I love the challenge of artificial bait. So that's kind of a landslide, artificial. My guy, Mike Bass Angler asks, would I rather use only mono, floral, or braid? Only one for the rest of my life. Dang, that's another hard one. Y'all are trying to stump me. Well, I think fish can see line. I think that matters, so I think I'd have to push braid aside. Mono or fluoro? Fluoro is expensive and it sinks. So if I want to do any topwater fishing, it would have to float. I'd go monofilament. Monofilament all the way. It might make some things a little bit tougher, but honestly, it's the cheapest. It's the most well-rounded. If you've only got one thing to use, personally, I would go mono. Austin Edwards, I like this one, asked, would I rather have a fish tank in my bathroom or have a waterbed full of fish? Uh, I had a waterbed as a kid, and those things are awful. Uh, I do the deuce quite frequently. How cool to be to be sitting there on the throne, enjoying your deuce, 
and you've got a fish tank right there. For sure, easily, I'd rather have a fish tank in the old bathroom. D Fisher asked, if you could only use one color, green pumpkin or black and blue forever, what would it be? Again, kind of a landslide. Probably my favorite all-around color, the old pumpkin of the green variety. Black and blue, something of that color is cool, great in muddy water, but for me, it's hard to beat green pumpkin. If I'm going somewhere, whether it's clear water, stained water, muddy water, I am the most confident with that. So easy for me, green pumpkin. Jesse Seacrest has been watching some of my painting videos. Would I only use frogs or only use the crankbaits that I've painted and created? I can only choose one to use for the rest of my life. Well, frog fishing is my favorite. Painting baits is fun, but there's a lot of places that I go that treble hooks will get you in trouble. Treble hooks will get you in trouble. Yep, I'd choose frogs over my own crankbaits. Ah, my guy Cinco C always comments. Thank you, sir. He asks, would I rather catch one PB a year? It's going to be half a pound bigger than the previous year. Catch only one PB a year or catch 250 two-pounders all year long. You all probably know the answer. Debo Dinks, they happen a lot. I would much rather have 250 two-pound fish than one personal best. Now, that's interesting because every year it'd go up half a pound. Man, you could have some huge fish in quite a while, but one fish a year, that's it? Nah, I'd rather catch numbers. Greg Sweet, this is an interesting, would I rather only use 50 pound fluorocarbon or five fluorocarbon for the rest of my life? 50 pound, that'd be some like, I don't know, ocean fishing stuff? 25 pound is already like wire, 50 pound, hell I could probably spool that up and use it like some Rambo rope. I would go five pound, as much as that would give me anxiety, I hate using really, really light line, I think I could do more with it. I have to get really at home and channel my inner drop shot. Oof. Ken Appleby, only use a Ned rig? or a 10 inch swim bait for the rest of my life. Hey, no shame in my Ned game. I would for sure go Ned for the rest of my life. MN Fishing, Minnesota Fishing asks, would I rather power fish or finesse fish for the rest of my life? Well, I honestly think both are needed in my arsenal. I wanna always have both. I'm not one of those guys that says, well, if you finesse fish, you're probably one of those guys that pee sitting down all the time. I always have a spinning reel with me. I always have both. Personally, I like to power fish more, so that question is pretty easy for me. I'd much rather throw a Texas rig on a heavy rod, 20-pound fluorocarbon, frogfish, toss the chatter in a bunch of thick stuff. I enjoy that way more. But, man, when you can't get a bite that way and the bite's tough, I'm never ashamed to get out a Ned rig or a stick bait, shake your head, start catching fish. Mark F., for every eight hours of fishing, would I rather only catch 10 one-pounders or one four-pounder? Well, they don't call them Debo Dinks for nothing. In an eight-hour day, would I rather only catch one four-pounder every time I go out? or 10 one pound dinks. I'd rather feel the tug on the line more. 10 one pounders. Adam Leitner asks, would I rather use reaction baits or bottom baits forever? That's interesting. Around here, I fish a lot of small lakes, you know, 200 acres to, you know, five, six, 700 acres, lots of ponds, and a lot of them have vegetation. Very rarely can I find lakes around here that don't ever have that. So bottom rigs, a lot of the time, just are not an option. So yeah, I'd have to go reaction baits. That would give me square bills, chatter baits, spinner baits, Top water stuff, all kinds of stuff I could use. That does stink because I think probably the Texas rig would be considered a bottom bait. Jig, shaky heads, Ned rig could cut a lot of those out. But all in all, I think I could do a lot more with just reaction baits. Brett Siegel, yeah, very interesting one. Would I rather fish a new place every time I go out or fish the same place every time I go out? That's probably depends on where you live and what you're around. If you live on a, a, a trophy lake, that's probably not a hard question, but for me, I would rather go all around and fish different spots every time I go out. It'd make it challenging because you wouldn't be able to get to know the spot and all the all the cool spots, but a lot of the spots are gonna be the same, right? A lot of the same areas. I guess if you had a map, it wouldn't be so bad. No, oh, I kinda like the adventure. I'd rather fish a new place every time. Peter Nidinger asked, would I rather bank fish a spot that has no pressure or boat fish a whole body of water that has moderate pressure? Now that depends because not all bank fishing places are created equal. We have some nice state parks here that they manicure. They've got a lot of fishing jetties, but I've also got some little podunk spots that only have like two or three spots that you can hit from the bank and they're an absolute gold mine from a boat. Dang, yeah, it would really depend on the spot. If it's a pretty decent bank spot, I'd rather hit a bank spot that has no pressure. Brandon Ferrara asks, fight a 10 pound largie on Lake Fork or a six and a half smallie on Lake Erie. One of my dreams, one of my goals is to have a double digit bass, a 10 pounder. I doubt that'll ever happen. Maybe I can catch enough fish in a year to equal 10 pounds. Now, I know those smallies are angry. A six and a half smallie be fighting like a dog with a mousetrap on its tail. 
But again, I've got that goal of a 10 pounder, so I'd have to go the 10 pounder on Lake Fork. Red Baron asks, would I rather catch a dink on every single cast or catch one 10 pounder all year? Well, again, ain't no shame in my dink game. I think you're all trying to test me here. Nope, I'd rather catch a dink every single cast. My guy North Fork Fishing asks, would I rather only use a wacky rig or a Nico rig for the rest of my life? I am way more comfortable with the wacky rig. Now, the Nico is something I'm going to be fishing more. I don't want to say a lot about it because there was a couple times where I think it's something that nobody talks about. It's something that's really not used or shown. I'm going to do that next year and show you more of it in spots where people say, oh, I always get hung up. I always get stuck. I think the Nico can play a huge game in that. But as for me now, you know, something like the Grande Bass Rattlesnakes, a stick bait, wacky rigged, a trick worm, flick shake, all kinds of things wacky rigged that I like. So I'd go wacky. People say I'm kind of wacky. Red Baron again asked, this one was kind of funny because I thought, oh, Randizzle, what would you do? Would you rather forget your scissors slash line cutters or forget your pliers? I've had multiple hooks in my hands, so for me, that's an easy one. I would rather forget my line cutters or scissors. Ah, oh, here's a fun one. My guy, Nate, you've seen him on my channel. He has the beautiful, long, luscious beard. Nate asked me, would I rather noodle for catfish or bowfish for bass? And he said, in quotes, one's scary and one's cringy. Oh, man, I think if I went on record saying I would rather bowfish for bass, there would probably be a petition to take down Depot's fishing. In all honesty, I would not want to shoot bass with a bow. I do like bow hunting and shooting bows. We do a lot of the 3D shoots out here, but I would noodle for catfish. It might be kind of scary, but as long as I had some sort of guide with me and I know that I'm sticking my hand in the right hole, I'd rather noodle for catfish. He also asked, now this is an interesting one, I'd rather only use clear slash natural colors or bright dark colors like muddy water, black and blue, fluorescence. That's hard because you can be completely out of your element both ways. I'm honestly more of a natural colors guy, so I think I'd go with the naturals over the bright and black and blue. Kyle Hartley, now this is a fun one. He said, would you rather have unlimited baits in only one color or unlimited colors of only one bait? Again, green pumpkin's kind of my thing, so I think I would have to go green pumpkin in any lure that I wanted. All those lures as opposed to any color chatterbait that I wanted or any color Cinco I wanted. It's pretty one-dimensional. Justin Hawkins says, would you give up a body part <laughs> to catch a 10-pound bass? Well, Justin, that depends on what body part you're talking about. I could probably give up a pinky. I've got two of those. I think I could lose one. Pinky soaring would be one-sided. I could lose an ear. Hell, these things are big enough. Just one of these probably works like two normal people ears. Yeah, depends on what you're asking me to give up. I do want a 10-pound bass bad, but there are certain things I would not touch to catch a 10-pounder. Leslie McCarthy asks, use only light spinning gear or heavy bait casters? That's a fun one, but I only use bait casters or spinning gear. Well, to me, like I said, I'm not ashamed to use spinning gear. I think you need to have it in your arsenal, but for me, fishing a bait caster is way more comfortable. I'd rather have that in my hand all day. So for me, heavy bait caster. Oh, Jack Williams, this is interesting. Would I rather catch two four pounders on one cast on an A-rig, so I have two fish on one bait while I'm reeling it in, or catch one eight pound fish? Well, an eight pounder would be bigger than my PB. Two four pounders would be pretty gnarly, but I'd rather have a new PB, one eight pounder. Drawn to an end here, only a couple left. Okay, Bucket Mouse says, would I rather fall in or get skunked? Well, I suppose that's where I'm falling in at. If it's a relatively safe place, I do hate getting skunked. Yeah, why not, push me in. Randizzle's probably gonna do it one day anyway. Okay, and for the final question of the night, this one had me laughing more than anything. Alan Wingy or Wingy or Winge? I don't know. Alan asks, corn dog or PBJ? Well, Alan, that's an easy question for me. Peanut butter and jelly. I am addicted to peanut butter. I'm one of those guys who go over to the peanut butter thing and just take a spoonful of it. <clears throat> PB and J all the way. The real question is, do you put peanut butter on one side and jelly on the other? Or do you put peanut butter over the jelly and mix them? All right, Fish and Friends, that's going to do it for tonight. I want to thank you all for watching. Now, tonight's subscribe, Fish and Friends shout out goes to all you. I had like 200 and some comments. I could not believe it when I checked that post tonight. 200 comments of you all asking me stuff. Pretty fun. I got a good laugh out of it. Hopefully, you all enjoyed something a little different. Get to know me. Maybe I'll be able to do some meetups and travel this year. More things for you all to get to know me and have fun. I had fun. So, thank you all to everybody who commented. I appreciate it a ton. Now, I would also like you all to comment below and let me know, do you like this type of video? I've had people ask, Debo, you should do a podcast. I don't have time to do a podcast, but I can do things like this where I'm just talking to you all through a camera on topics. If you want to see me do more stuff like this, comment below, or if you have other video ideas, more tackle reviews, 
Whatever it is, comment below. I love hearing from you all. So that's it for me tonight. It is laid out. I've got to get to editing. So thanks for watching and until next time.